Hello, everyone on Zoom. Uh, we'll get going. We're a bit of a smaller group today. Um, let me just get us screaming. And then we'll get going. Maybe. <laughs> Be a lot of live streams. I know. There's <laughs> <laughs> No, this is an I that's an IT issue, not community <laughs> services. I thought the new policy was everything was community services. <laughs> well, I have a feel sometimes. <laughs> All right. Unless you my holes on this approach. I must support my theory of my personal IT person. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the policy, then yeah. you should have your personal yeah. HR. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to say that we're live streaming now, and if we're not, we'll upload a uh, recording. We'll upload the video later. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, we've just got a small group. I don't know where my pen went. Small group this morning. Um, I don't know if others will join us on Zoom at some point. Uh, let's just go around and do introductions so those on Zoom know who is in the room with us. So I'll just start with me, Jamie, and um, send it to my right. Hi, I'm Madeline. Um, I'm from Russia. Judy from Fusion. Uh, Todd Sue is a community services. Andrew Mackey, executive director of the Scarborough Land Trust and on the Open Space Committee. You guys might have to talk louder so the. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm Kelsey Mallon. I'm uh, with the Marsh Committee of uh, Scarborough Land, Land Trust uh, and Open Space Committee. <laughs> I I'm on him. I'm trying to talk loud. The owl is not easy. <laughs> well, and also the owl was a little twisted. There we go. Okay. So. See how far I can move it without pulling either the owl or my computer <laughs> off the table. We attempted to have a Zoom, use the Zoom in room, but it wasn't working so well. And the owl was just slow this morning, like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> or like me. So weird. Okay. I don't I don't know what's going on with our owls. I can't really see everybody, but it's okay. Let's get started. <laughs> there you are. Oh, I found I'm you. Oh, oh yeah. Really catching up. You can okay. slide your table in a little bit. Not too much, but and then I can't plug in. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Weird challenge. All right, let's, uh, uh, folks on Zoom, if you wouldn't mind just saying good morning and introducing yourself. Karen, we'll start with you. Sure, good morning. I am Karen Shoup, Town Council Liaison to the Open Space Committee. Maggie. Good morning, I'm Maggie Vishno. <laughs> I'm representing the Conservation Commission. And just to let everyone know, I'm sorry, I apologize, but I'll need to get off at 9.30. Thanks, Maggie and Noah. Noah. Noah has left the building. All right. Hey, Noah, you're muted. Can you hear us? All right. Here comes the. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, before we jump in too much, uh, the minutes were from the last meeting were sent out with the meeting agenda. Does anyone have any um, changes or corrections or additions to make? We're all good with that. It's largely about our community engagement events, which have now passed at this point. So, all right. Welcome, Doug. Welcome. Um, all right, at this point, then I'll um, turn it over to Katie and uh, Madeline for uh, so we can hop into the agenda. Perfect, thank you. Share my screen. Okay. okay, can everybody see that? And can everybody hear me? Okay, good. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Um, 
we're going to have um so we just have a few things that we're going to cover today um we're going to give you a summary of the feedback that we've heard so far from the public engagement um and then our two main things that we want to talk about today are um discussing the results that we got from the conservation prior prioritization staffing um, activities that we've had everybody um, do through our public engagement. And um, we're kind of going to get a uh, gut check from you all to make sure that it seems right. And we'll have a conversation about that. And then um, we're going to review some potential conservation goals that um, we've drafted up as a team and some strategies and have a discussion about um, whether those feel right, and then have a brainstorming session about potential strategies that could be included in the plan. Um, and then we're gonna go through next steps and review the schedule again. <laughs> so here's where we are in the schedule as a reminder. Um, we just had the public meeting and we're still collecting responses um, from the digital survey. And then in the background, uh, our team is still doing um, mapping analysis and uh, developing conservation priorities and strategies and um, reviewing ordinances um, to make recommendations. Um, but this meeting, the main focus is reviewing those conservation priorities to finalize that map for the plan of conservation focus areas. So just as a review, we had our big public meeting on June 26th or July 26th, and we had um, so we had 27 people submit comment cards. So that's the number that I was going by. I, I don't know if we had a different number from sign up. We did, yeah. We had about 40 people, so not everybody handed in their cards. Ah, uh, typical. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we still got their feedback in the prioritization, so um, that's good. And then from the digital survey, we've had 32 responses so far, um, and we're still trying to pull those in. Um, and so I'm gonna, at the end, ask everybody to go back and um, ask your contacts to go and fill out the survey because we would love to have more responses. Can I just ask, have, when did you last check the number of digital It was this, this morning. morning. So um, just so everyone knows, we're doing sponsored posts on Facebook now to try to drive people there. Um, and it's we'll be um, running for the next two weeks, so through the end of August. So hopefully we'll start seeing uptick. And we did see really uptick. Huge yeah. boost okay. on Friday. Yeah. 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 So, um, I mean, people are definitely commenting on the post, and it's not very constructive or helpful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But hopefully um, there, and we have gotten a lot of like clicks through. Um, hopefully people will start responding also and providing the feedback at right. the website. All right, and then we also have had a lot of feedback from the pop-up events. Um, had 178 people participate in um, that voting activity and um, those are done, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, that was oh, it's just mm -hmm. from the activity. Um, just the vote. I think people putting yeah. the voting with the money yeah, into sure. different categories yeah, in the sure. public meeting yeah. when they had the Madeline's handed out ones to participate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> vote with your dots. We'll give you a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, when we talk about pop events, that was the to park, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also um, the farmers market. Yeah. Farm um, so digging into what we heard, um, I'll go through some of the demographics that we know of um, the events that we, we've had. So for the public meeting, um, from the comment cards that we received, we know that most of the respondents, or most of the people who attended were full-time residents. Um, we had very few part-time residents or people who were not from Scarborough. Um, and we had a pretty good distribution of people who have lived in um, Scarborough for different amounts of time, um, but most people lived somewhere between five and 15, have lived here for somewhere between five and 15 years. So, and then kind of a decent distribution of, of neighborhoods. Um, so, and it, we hit some of the neighborhoods that we didn't 
to do that online that which helps. But we had a lot of people say other and then put areas within some of the other neighborhoods that we listed. So yeah, it all depends on where you consider neighborhood boundaries to be. And then for the online engagement, um, we had a few more people who were not residents participate. And um, it also reached a lot more of the people who have lived here to buy between the homes. <laughs> and we got more responses from North Scarborough from the online uh, and Higgins Beach. We had five more responses from the one. Um, and then to sort of touch on what we got from the resource category map activity at the public meeting, um, we got a lot of great comments about values that um, like don't necessarily have to do with changing anything about the maps or the data in there, um, but just suggestions that people had for um, things that they thought were important or areas that they thought were important to conserve. And so we've noted all of those. Um, but of the actual edits to or additions to data um, for the maps, we had a lot of suggested trail connections for recreation. And then um, for clean water and environmental hazards, we had a lot of suggestions of new data to add, including coastal bluffs, natural gas lines, riverboard discharge permits, stormwater water discharge locations, um, and then including beaches and the erodible soils there. So we'll be making those changes um, in in conversation with the with staff um, to make sure that it represents those values. So now I'm going to show you the three different maps that came out of these three different types of um, outreach activities. Um, so I made a matrix map for each of them based on how people weighted um, those different resource categories. So for the public meeting, we've already seen this. Um, Habitat had the most, um, most the highest percentage of the votes um, with clean water and marsh migration close behind. And then um, there was a pretty even spread between ag, recreation, and environmental hazards. And so that's what that map looks like when we put it into the matrix. Um, and so it really prioritizes the habitat areas closer to the, um, around the marsh. Um, and then you can see there's a little, a little bit of prioritization towards the west around where some of these farms are. And then for the online results, um, it wasn't terribly different. We had a little less allocation to habitat and a lot more added to agriculture and forestry that I thought was really interesting. And you'll see in a second how it changes the map. Um, but then clean water was still a really high priority for a lot of people. So just for people to uh, know, like 14% would be like if everything was even. So if it's okay. so things that are above 14% are, you know, people are putting more priority than if it was just even and less. Yeah. Online, you got more participation from North Carver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense because yeah. of the warm connector. The yeah. fact that you have an active group out there right now. So I'm just wondering. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We had a lot of. Was one line number of people? 30, like, only 32, 32 right? so far. We need to bump that up. And there's 20 something at the no, well, there's so, 40 at the back. But 27. 27 is a little bit of cars. Cars. Oh, okay. So 40 people voted. So I think I'm This is like on seven people. Yeah, this is yeah, 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 yeah. You go back to the map for the public meeting. Yeah. So this is all categories combined. Mm -hmm. All of the categories combined. At, well, first we weight each category um, based on the percentage of votes, and then. We add them all together and combine them. So and each parcel of land has like a value based yeah. on what it, where it falls in. Yeah, yeah. It's not parcels, so each little piece, not like it. there's lots yeah. of there's billions of little pieces on it because all the different layers are overlaid on each other, yeah. and all squished together. 
So, but they're smushed together by categories. So for each category, the numbers were added up and then and then weighted and normalized and then weighted to match what people voted on. And so you'll see as we go through it that the maps will change slightly, very, very slightly. Because there's not a huge difference in opinion, but there's some. And Maggie, go ahead. Um, thank you. I two things. I I was surprised that marsh migration wasn't more of an issue, just based on a lot of the uh, newspaper articles and you know public discourse about it. And then these numbers of you know we it say it's twenty five percent, but it's twenty five percent of a pretty small number of people. Right. right? right. So, yeah. so are these how are these numbers? Are these what you expected? Are these um, I, I guess I guess my ultimate question is how significant are these numbers? Well, I think after we get through going through these three, showing you the three different maps, that's the discussion that we want to have is, you know, how do you all feel about where, you know, what the feedback is that we've gotten, what it looks like, and then what we might do to increase that feedback before we're ready, before we need to write up the report. So, um, so yeah, we do want to talk about that a little bit. Um, but let's go through all the maps so that you can see the differences and the totals of participation between the pop-ups and the uh, online and the public meeting. One, one question, though, I, I have is I wonder, can I get what makes up the data layers? Yeah. I'm just curious, you know, what uh, data layers are you using for habitat, which ones are you using for quality? Yep. I assume these are kind of mostly state. Yeah. 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 We and we stuck pretty closely to what we talked about a couple of meetings ago, but I can send out a, a final list of those to the yeah. committee to review and just make sure. So we they... went over a lot of them in the first meeting, but it's been so long. Yeah, yeah. but it has been a while. So we can give you we can send out a list of all the layers that are each one. Uh, just to run through the last couple maps. So this is the map for the online. Um, and you can see that a lot more of these areas to the west um, have their higher values um, because of that weight that was given to ag land and, and, uh, and areas with prime marlin soil. Um, and then for final map um, for pop-up events and um, I think the way that this was run was uh, there are about 178 people at these various events and they were given five uh, dollars to, to vote on things but it averages out the same thing um, and so again habitat is the highest um, percentage of votes and then uh, clean, followed by clean water and marsh migration, which tracks with the public meeting results. Um, and so it's a pretty similar map to the public meeting map. And then this is the public meeting map with the um, existing open space land overlaid, um, which we're still working on our findings, though. There might be things that are not just right yet, but um, just to give you an idea of what areas are already considered that would be taken out of that priority map um, and what's left. So I think now is uh, when we'd like to discuss like, what are your reactions to these results and do they feel correct? Are there things that we're missing? Um, do you intend to combine all of the data and do, yeah, but that you haven't done that yet. So. We haven't done it yet because we still need to make some edits to some of the maps after we talk okay. about that, so. And they're still collecting. Yeah, and yeah. yeah the, so once it's all done. What is the hard cutoff? Uh, that's another cutoff thing to talk about. We don't really have a hard cutoff, okay. so we can leave it open, you know, until we get to the point where we got to finish up stuff to get the okay. draft report done. Okay. But yeah. until then, we can leave it open if people are still answering. If we get, if we look at it and people stop answering, we'll close it so that it doesn't just linger okay. out there. Um, so I guess my question: What is a between all the resources on one top of five? Yeah. Plans, what's a number of participants that you feel? I know it's not statistically valid, but in a realm where 
it would stand up to a naysayer saying, because again, if I call my advisory board right now and they put in 10 votes, recreation becomes first. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. not what this is to reflect, but yeah. that's how yeah. close these yeah. numbers are. And everybody can do the same for categories. So how are you, what's a number that when you get like 500, you know, 400? Yeah, I mean, I think that changes by community what people consider depending on the kinds of public engagement that you normally get and, um, you know, what you're looking for in terms of public engagement here. Um, so I guess I would turn that question back around to you guys and say, what do you think would make sense and how, if, and if, you know, we need more people, do we need more of a particular place of people, a particular age of people? You know, or just more people in general, and then if that's the case, what do we need to do to start gathering that? You know, get driving people to that website and sending out. I mean, I'm guessing just due to the number of people from North Scarborough that answered that somebody sent it to their email list, right? right. And all their friends did it, and that's why there's all so many people from one place that answered in the last three or four days. So we just need probably more people to do that. <laughs> and I guess my second comment. Question to go along with that, Jamie, in the autumn is how do we make those data points useful, especially if they all come back with like three or four percent? Yeah. You know what well, I mean? Well, that's kind of I, what I was thinking too is priority. What's a, they're all a priority within a handful well, of points. Yeah, but, but there's I mean, two things do emerge. I mean, habitat and clean water clearly are emerging. I, I, you know, because they're at 25, 28. Above twenty or above. Right, but I'm right. guy. When I look at percents, we talk percents of hundred people. That's but she, four people. I, I think maybe before we start talking about what it means, maybe we really need to have a goal of getting like at least three hundred, four hundred yeah. yeah. before we start. Like, yeah. And I was, I'm gonna be honest, I was disappointed with the outcome of the public meeting. We sent every, we have so many committees, and to not have all the committee members of the town show up for the meeting was disappointing to me. A little. Like, okay, here's your chance. Um, so which Jamie said we're doing sponsored ads. So I think we probably need to do a blast to all of our committees again and be like, hey, don't cry, fill out this form. <laughs> it's like a little tough love. Like it takes five minutes. I've done it, it was really easy. Um yeah, I think a marketing plan of how to get them. Yeah. Done. So we give a deadline. Yeah. By Friday. But, yeah. <laughs> I think because um, if, if we get 300, 400 participants, then I think we can actually have to split. But yeah, you're fine. Right. I mean, I think we're still going to get rid of those numbers. I was going to say, yeah, it's still going to be. What, really what, what strikes me is that this, you know, even there was a little bit of variation to the North Scarborough thing, but there was a lot of consistency, even though they were small groups between those groups. Yeah. But I think it would be better to have much. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just because we have some strong groups. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, we, we're running, you know, we ran into the summer, which is a big issue here. And a lot of our public comment session has been in that time block. You know, if we could keep the survey open past. There's also the start of schools, so yep. you gotta get past that. Maybe until late September. Oh yeah, we'll definitely keep it open until then. I mean, oh. we can probably keep it open partly until October. Um, you know, give people enough time and we can keep sending stuff out. I mean, the other options are, you know, like, I don't know what else, what works here in Scarborough, right? Like, so other things that we've done, send a postcard with the QR code on it to every resident. And had them do that that last month. So that, you know, there's that issue. Uh put it on the local TV with the QR code so that people can, you know, who watch meetings can pick it up there. Um, you know, continue to send email blasts out to whatever lists there are for all the committees and all the people, and then ask those people to send it out to all their friends. Um, you know, snowballing it that way is probably, you know, people directly asking somebody is probably the best way to get it done. Um so, uh, but I, you know, I would agree that 300 is probably the minimum number that you want to be able to say, you know, this is how many people. Uh, I can tell you that, like, when we did Bridgeton, over 300 people answered the survey in Bridgeton and considerably smaller than Scarborough. So, yeah. um, 
We what? have a select few people that like to subscribe, but we don't have a lot of participation from the masses. Yeah. And it is frustrating because yeah. you hear from the same. Um, yeah, totally. I mean, another option, if you want to get some more young people's voices, is when school starts, you can see if there's a teacher who wants to have, those, like, have it as a class assignment, and, you know, they would give them the slides, and they could show it to them. They allowed us, we did our community center survey, we we'll sit in the cafeteria during lunch block, and we got, you know, we brought enough people when we went to tables, and they took That's the scares survey. Me. What's that? <laughs> That's scares me, yeah. Like the high school? Middle school. Oh, middle school. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And it was, they had a quick answer, so it wasn't like, you know, they could fill in, but it's, yeah. Again, we probably not going to get. Yeah. Back to uh, what about having the table at sustainability today? Yeah. We can, I mean, if so, I will say that I will not be available to man a table on sustainable start of it because I will be running everywhere. But if the committee can commit to having um, volunteers there, that that was one of the struggles this summer is we had to cancel Summerfest, our our um, being at Summerfest, and we had to cancel one of our concerts at the park because we it was only staff for the and Pressy. Manning the uh, <laughs> manning the table. So we definitely um, we need some help from the from committee members to make that happen. Um, and I will not be employed on the sustainable charter. Will not. Always volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> That's essentially what she's doing anyway. <laughs> what day is what day is uh, October day? It's uh, it's uh, October six. Uh, is that a Saturday? It is a Sunday, actually. Sunday. Okay. I mean, I can definitely commit. To I mean, Scar, uh, y'all are going to be there anyway already, so. Right. so I can, I can take a walk and through the space. My daughter and I can help too because we have done our yeah. And you can also, if you have some of those postcards that have the QR code on, just put them around at lots of tables. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, so people can take them. and fortunately, um, at the town council table, they did take the, the postcards for the open space plan and at Summerfest and we're handing them out there yeah. and things like that. So, um, yeah. postcards we yeah. have. Uh, you guys made up a bunch for us, and we can probably do some more, print up some more. They were just done. What about if we had a couple laptops for the group right there? Yeah, yeah. that'd be all right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So say, hey, you know, do it right now. So, yeah, or we can just do it in a similar way, like the with the dot loading, yeah, and things like that. Okay. I thought that was a pretty special. Have we got anything at the library? library? Do we have anything at the library? No, not yet. That's the point. I uh, Karen, go ahead. Sure. I was going to first say we did have the postcards at Summerfest. So I did hand a couple out and engage people with in regards to the open space plan. And I also, I do agree, we need to get some more feedback. You know, my daughter's starting high school and we were just looking at clubs, I think last night and they, they have like an eco club. Um, and so I don't know if it's worth working, reaching out to that club and seeing if there's people or someone in that club that would want to help at least get some feedback, maybe from high schoolers, or maybe we can try to get funneled through the school, maybe to get some more feedback from that for the, the open space plan. Yeah, we, we um, this is Pressy. I just react to that. We do have two um, members of the Eagles Club on the MARC committee and Scarborough Land Trust. They haven't done a lot of volunteering. <laughs> We reached out to them, so we can try to reach out again and see if they would at least see if they can at least get their club members to or, or sponsor an event where they could have, you know, at least their club members and others. Um, yeah, yeah, I will or say, I was gonna say, see the staff is in the school that runs the club and reach out to them, maybe. Yeah, I have the staff yeah. contact, so I can, um, I don't mind taking that on. Um, working directly through the school department to get stuff out in their newsletters, unfortunately, isn't a great option because um, they have that stuff locked down. They they only send out school-related stuff and um, will not do town-related. Okay. If their committee from the school is helping with the open space plan, maybe we can work our way into there. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not too optimistic, but we can try. Get a stack of 
Oh, the card I'll take them to Scarborough Brown, Starbucks. Okay. And when we do the online one, I, I check with Nicole because we've done a digital lottery, but I don't mind like donating a senior beach pass to a resident if you participate, get your name in a drawing or something to try to raise the count of you know participants. And you're gonna get the 150 people to say, well, yeah. it already did it, I don't think what we'll go in with it. Yeah, Anybody right. that's participating in the online, just to try that. Yeah, are we collecting contact information from them? It's, it's optional. It's optional. Yeah. 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 Oh. So but if we you can have to add to that question, just like if you want to be entered into the drawing, you know, put your name in. Right. And yeah. then everybody who puts their name in. So we do a resident pass. Yeah. Okay. So what, what are the numbers that can as of now? So 32 participants of the online survey. Um, 178 participants from the top of events and around 40 participants of the public meeting. So we're almost the same. Mm -hmm. So another, another 200 to this discussion here talking about 150. So I think it'd be nice to get to 500 in the break. It's worth pretty good time. Well, yeah. the most of the members filled up the activity, which is a full survey. As of right now, is that correct? Well, it's over the like gate from pop up events, and they didn't do like the entirety of what was they didn't allocate right. money. No, but they they weighted kind of their priorities yeah. for the resource categories, which is kind of what what this is looking at. So yeah. they really did kind of the the crux of what we were yeah. looking for. Um, So, so it sounds like if we have a few more ideas and we keep going and we have plenty of time, we're going to get to like 400 or 500. Yeah. So, I cool. think we can You're so there. optimistic. I am. I love it. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen. I totally think we can. I think we can talk. Yeah. Because we still, because school will start. And yeah, you're right. Yeah, we'll we'll start start and then we can flash out people. Yeah. Right yeah. 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 Say, when my yeah. kids were little, I never paid attention to anything until after they got back to school. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in good I know for uh, what I've been told for poll, a lot of polling, uh, it's not my area of expertise. You need 250 before you start getting into a statistically valid survey. Uh, but then again, you're also trying to make sure you're hitting you know, whatever you want in terms of age demographics. Right. I mean, in this case, this won't be statistically valid because people are self-selecting, right? Who's answering? Right. right. So, yeah. So this is to get the sense from the community, and I think what we need to, the committee needs to think about is when do you feel like you'll have a sense of what the community thinks? And you know, the hard part I think is, you know, so you've probably gotten responses from a lot of people who have a particular interest. The hard part is getting responses from the regular people who maybe aren't, you know, and particularly I think involved. Pop up event has a lot of people. Who right, that those are great ways. Literally, almost no interest. You just sort of draw them into answer. Yeah. You know, no, those are great ways to get to those people. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you may have gotten them through that. Um, and I think, you know, continuing on with it, just like on the Facebook page, so it's not really aimed at anybody in town in particular, except for people who go on Facebook. Um, that should, you know, should draw in people. Um, we're still getting people answering, so. Well, and I was going to say, too, there's not a huge variation, kind of like what Cressy, Cressy said earlier. There's not a huge variation between the different events. I mean, every it's, you know, clean water and habitat are rising up a bit, but it's still fairly evenly distributed. So even if we do get to 200 or 400 responses, are we going to see that much variation? It'll be interesting to see, but my sense is that everything is important and right. so no, it's, it's because when i've done this before things have definitely risen to like the 50 percent margin you know like so, so in other communities things have been become a priority mm -hmm. versus here where it does seem like so far at least things are fairly even which isn't good or bad i mean there's no you know and you know, if so, if you look at this, so if this were to stay exactly the way it is now, I was going to say the important stuff kind of is already well, and and that's always going to be true, right? Like most people recognize what the important stuff is just on their own; they pick it out. But you can also see patterns of you know those streams and you know some kind of protection and connection between the pieces that come along 
there and you know thinking about like when you look at it and you look at where there's darker areas and where the green is you can start to see like oh yeah, that might be good if we aim for those areas where we could then connect some things yeah um you know so that's where i think that's how you want to think about how this gets used right like it doesn't really matter what the actual number is or you know but what's the pattern that you see there and where do you see places where you know in the end if we were to make a map that was less specific that was kind of blobs of these are our focus areas you know can you start to envision where those might be um do you think there's any anything we can do different in our, in our wording or anything like that as far as to shortening the choices or anything to get a one or two priority because i just in my experience the different rounds is that the more equal things are yeah, the less progress you make, and everybody's like, Yeah, I mean, on the we same can experiment thing. with. I mean, one thing that I noticed in the talk about the people, you know, they had six categories, they had five dots, yeah, they would three. give them only three dots, yes. right? Well, I mean, we say, you know, you can your top three among the six, you know, so yeah, I mean, we could change it now. I mean, we would be able to then compare the two things, but we could say of the online engagement that we've gotten now, since it's fairly even, we will going forward, what we want is to let people vote for their top two or three, yeah. and then see what happens there. Yeah. You can certainly do it that way. Um, yeah, yeah. because I, I just got a sense at the pop-up event, so, some people were just being kind of really quick, and so they were just sort of like, yeah. instead of saying, they think, okay, what are my real friends? But if you say then, okay, you got six choices, but you only have three dots. You know? Yeah. And if you want to put them all in one, fine. You want to put it, you know, spread it out among your talk, but that sort of forces them to, Right. At least make some choices along the six categories. Yeah. I also um, think we have to realize that the categories are not equal in terms of education in people's minds. Yeah. Like they might have read marsh migration. I don't think a lot of people understand fully what that means or environmental hazards, what that means. Yeah, that one's a little ambiguous. I mean, and we're not calling it marsh migration and the information that's out there. It's sea level rise yeah. is what it's called. So, yeah. um, and whether they necessarily understand the connection between conserved land and open space and sea level rise, but they understand that sea level rise is a concern. So, yeah. But I will tell you, nationwide water always holds the highest, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and habitat's not too far behind. So I think it's not rising, yeah. right? Then the friends, friends yeah. here. totally agree. Um, one thing I noticed about the map is that habitat is all around the marsh. There's so what I'm one thing I worry about is what we would classify as just um, farmland. None of that has habitat, or is that just because it's the so it's based on soil, right? So, uh, no, I mean, all anywhere where there's habitat data, it's there. The places that are darker are where there's basically more things overlapping, right? So, the marsh okay. ends up with you know, everything, everything. is important in the marsh, yeah. right? That's why it's so <laughs> that's why it gets so dark, dark. okay? Right, Got it. so part of it is the way we colored it, like if we were to color it differently, it you know. So it might tease out some of those other areas where there is habitat and water and farmland, yeah. right? Those three things overlapping. Right. And that is what's showing here. So where you see that darkening, those they're not going to just have farmland. They have also habitat. And okay. other, you know, so okay. that's why they're being pulled out. Okay. It's a little washed out too on here. Like yeah. on, on here, it's easier to see. See, yeah, it's a little darker on there. Oh, right. Yes, I see. <laughs> yeah, there's more sort of like. Yeah. yeah, there isn't a lot of important stuff away from the So the other thing work. that we can do is send you all a PDF okay. of this so that you can just have it to look at and ponder right. over. Yeah. Um, but um, so I re I, in agreement that we should change it to the, your top three on the online, uh, yeah. change it to that yeah. for going forward. Okay. Is there a way to capture a value for connectivity to existing open space? So like when I look at this, the yeah. the left, you know, all the big watches are green, maybe yeah. have a lower value, like moving forward. But if we added a value category for connectivity, that would boost those areas. Yeah. So there is a there is value for connectivity okay. in the recreation map okay. because we put in connectors okay. and we got a bunch more from people that we're going to add to it after we go over them to make sure that we got them all. So I think if there's other connectors okay. that we want to capture 
before we rerun it, and we will do that. Yeah, I definitely think that's really important. Yeah. And we also have, um, oh, we have habitat habit habit networks. networks, right? We do have habitat oh. networks also. I just which are basically streams. Like it would just be really cool if all those green squares just connected. Yeah. yeah. Some, yeah. You know, like yeah. a river yep. green sort of thing. Yep. Um, I brought this out with parks and conservation point for it, I think, several times. I just want to bring it out again, too. A lot of the state data, of course, is designed to think about the entire state of Maine and the listed endangered threatened species that the state has raised to that level to habitat blocks, which include vast tracts of undeveloped areas of Maine. You know, Scarborough is not necessarily representative of all of Maine, and our priorities don't have to be state priorities. Our, our habitat block size might be smaller than yep. beginning with habitat, you know, where they have a, a minimum size that they look at in terms of, you know, roadless and you know, unfragmented blocks and et cetera. Uh, you know, that's why. We're looking at species uh, that are not listed, but are here and are declining, but don't have any legal protection, but are important to Scarborough. Yeah. And so uh, you know, I just want to keep this in mind too that right. you know, as far as the state is concerned, the marsh gets all the, the intensity, right? Yeah. yeah. It has the state listed endangered species, it has the state rare. Ecological right. communities for the most part. Um, the, you know, the marsh, the marsh itself physically is pretty well protected. Right. It's owned by, basically, it's owned by indigenous wildlife yep. and just state wildlife management area. Yep. Um, so, you know, what is our focus in terms of recreation and connectivity and habitat and uh, uh, you know, uh, threats, uh, environmental threats, yes. etc. And the rest of the scarf. Right. And we, so we took some of that into consideration, like for the large undeveloped blocks in the habitat map, we kept them at over 100 acres because you do really need that much block for, you know, un, uh, most species need a pretty big area. Uh, There's not many party house here. blocks. There are, the you're right. They're, <laughs> all, they're all on the <laughs> north side. So, but for for the, um, what would it be? It's all I want to say. In the so we kept all of any block of any size okay. on one of the layers. I right now cannot remember which one it was, but one of them we kept all the blocks because we thought the same thing. Like in Scarborough, it doesn't really matter that this isn't a hundred acres, but this five acres might be important both for connectivity and you know lots of other things. So so we're gonna keep it on this one. In the habitat one, we didn't want to keep all of them because they probably wouldn't contribute to habitat unless it was through a connectivity, which we already had on there. So we did try to be thoughtful about that. What you know, we won't have information about the habitat areas of other species, right? That aren't in state data particularly. Um, and you know, I don't we're not gonna create those layers probably for this project, but I mean, that I think that's a good recommendation for the future is to say, you know, we might want to start to think about what are the habitats of species that we care about in this town and how do we, and you know, how does that compare to what we've outlined here? Can we go back to the whole like change the survey question? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to change the survey. I think okay. that's a really bad idea. I think you could add a question at the end that yeah. says, what are your top three? Okay. But if you change the survey, then that seems like sinky. Like we got something we didn't like, so now we're changing it. And I don't want to okay. do that. Well, I'm not well, I'm Maybe just a bottom question. Yeah. Thank you. What are your top three? And yeah. then I think then you can get the quote. Excuse me. Yep. Okay. And it also keep consistency from it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, we're going to have it open for so long. And, yeah. you know, yeah. that, I don't want to explain that anybody yeah. wants me to. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Robin, go ahead. Are we just asking people for their top three priorities, or are we assuming the top three priorities from survey results? 
So that's kind of what we're discussing. So right now the survey results aren't necessarily giving us a top three. Everything is kind of weighted very similarly with the exception of maybe habitat and water quality, which are rising a, a bit above. And so we're talking about ways that we might be able to get a little bit more differentiation between the six resource categories. Okay. I just, yeah, because if, if things are getting clustered, you know, like, and, and people aren't understanding like the marsh migration is the same as sea level rise. Is there, is there a way that we can help people understand that, I guess? Otherwise, I'm not sure that the survey is really. The survey doesn't talk really at all about marsh migration. We're talking, we, it's, it's focusing on sea level rise and then we're inferring marsh migration from that response. Okay, I was just getting back to that comment that someone made. Maybe it was Karen. I can't remember who about uh, they were surprised that marsh migration wasn't on there or wasn't a higher. So I just wanted to make sure too that are vernal pools included too, like in in whatever sort of. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They're included in the habitat data. Okay. Thank you. I think the website, I mean, the survey gives, if you read the, there's background, right? Yeah. There, yeah. There's enough for um, a person who reads through it to make a somewhat intelligent right. choice. Right. <laughs> It's it was you know, it, having yeah. that people are willing to spend the time or like, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you reordered them, are they going to pick that one first because they made it through the top three description? Yeah, I mean, people are people, but um, I think it's set up pretty cool. For, uh, it's really, it's like, it's not, it's not asking for a right for Yeah, we'll add that for sure. The question is how do we, how do we, Get that out there so people know there's the support. Yeah. Yeah. Potential. Yeah, we can put it right at the beginning of the survey. Like, if you complete the survey and give us your name and email, we'll enter you in, you know, and we'll tell them if you complete. I don't think we can actually make it so that they can't give us their name if they don't fill everything in, but we can tell them they have to, and that usually works good enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I think um, for a survey that I've done in the past, so that it wasn't, their response wasn't necessarily connected to <laughs> their contact information. At the very end, there was like a pop-up and they would email their information if they wanted to be entered. Um, so we wouldn't know how they responded to the survey itself, but they would still, I mean, it would be an extra step that they would have to um, you know, we could set up even just a, a regular separate email um, just for this, that the email address pops up on the screen afterwards um, and they can, yeah, we can see it the survey that we're using to do that. Yeah, yeah just as, as they're like on the, on the yeah. thank you screen, like thank it's you. It's just like a bad survey. Well, or, no, or not even. It's, I mean, I think that's what it ends up being is like, it, you just make another another survey the only answer that comes in there it doesn't it's not connected to that first right so they don't yeah i mean that would be even easier yeah yeah because i think she was saying like having an email where they're like here email us if you want to meet it oh email time. to that yeah oh, but i like the idea to have a second we'll survey, survey. Yeah. survey yeah just if it pops up yeah and then that survey is not connected to the first and literally you just enter your email address and right. and it will be sent yeah or collected separately and then yeah okay we're giving away a beach pass yeah for next year yeah. okay yeah, for not for year. this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. beach pass the remainder of 2024 right? <laughs> <laughs> which they only need until labor day right <laughs> 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 All right. Um, any other questions, particularly on that particular part of the meeting? All right. Then let's uh, move on. Um, okay. So, thinking about draft goals, this is where we started from, from what we heard from people and the things that people said were important in the surveys. 
Um, so uh, the goals being to build an open space network that promotes healthy biodiverse ecosystems, foster resilience in our communities and working lands, is interconnected and accessible for the entire community and protects 30% by 2030. Um, that's a place to start. This is the first time you guys have seen it. If you have immediate reactions, we can talk about it now, or we will send the slides out to you all so you can think about them and see if there's if there's goals that if there's things we've missed, uh, or if you think it's too much or too little. Uh, I guess maybe we might want to have some agreement on some terms so like yeah resilience can mean different yeah. things depending on the context so making sure that yeah and we can totally change i mean it's this is like very direct. yeah so um, and we sort of tried to order them sort of in the way you know in how we've heard from people the most you know so we put the healthy biodiverse ecosystems top because habitat comes out on top and that's what we've heard from many people in their responses um you know and then the idea of resilience in the community and then the eye lands and working forests um, and then making sure that there's interconnection and accessibility and then the obvious 30 by 30. Karen? What about preventing further development along the resources? I mean, because I know that's something we're working on currently in regards to like our ordinances. And I just didn't know if there was feedback because, you know, we get a lot of feedback about the great, the rate of growth and how much growth we've had. And I didn't know if we received any feedback about that in regards to the open space plan or specifically in regards to when we talk about the goals of the open space plan, am I now dropping a new goal when I say to me, part of the open space plan is to protect further development along the resources. Yeah, I will say, I don't know that we've gotten specific feedback, but the um, somewhat unconstructive feedback that we're getting on Facebook posts is definitely conserve it all, stop all development. So um, that kind of came out of a lot of Yeah, yeah, a lot of just anecdotal comments about that. And there so, were some notes on the maps about stopping some development in certain areas. But. So you could have a goal that's not stop development, but it's, you know, um, I'm not thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Right, balance, the balance. The, yeah, the balance, the needs for yeah. the community's growth and these resources or something. Mm -hmm. So that can be like a, another goal. Mm -hmm. I think you would be remiss if you didn't specifically use the word marsh in one of these goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so add that maybe to the first one. Are, are these areas where we... These these areas, I, I completely agree with what Karen's saying. Are these areas where we can require low impact development? So if you're going to do it, then you have to do you have to make the standards, the performance standards, a lot more aggressive, ambitious. What's the word I'm looking for? Well, this plan isn't going to affect zoning, so that would be a question for that's a zoning question. So, so it's sort of outside the purview of the open space plan. So these would be the goals, and then there would be a set of recommendations, Robin. And one of those recommendations would yeah. be develop low impact development standards for lands that are high priority. You know, that could be a recommendation. And then we have to go do that work. Um, but this but yeah, is the framework right. for that additional work. That's so sorry, I'm just wondering. Oh. I'm just wondering, have, have we reached have we reached out to, I don't know, the mid-Atlantic area, Chesapeake Bay? to find out what they've done in these areas um, to basically reduce or disincentivize uh, development in these areas? That's not what we're doing, Robin, with this open I know it's not. Plan. I know it's not. I, I'm completely aware, but I think it's a very good point that Karen brings up that if we're going to try to connect the dots, then we've got to have some kind of teeth to do that. Robin, we're doing that a little bit with Conservation Commission and the Environmental Standards. So um, you have an e you should have an email in your inbox about having a meeting with um, Angela Autumn and me about that next week. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I just got back from vacation. Thank you. No, it's totally fine. I'm glad you're thinking about it because this is going to be a conversation at a meeting we have next week. Well, we could have a goal that incorporates uh, smart growth and careful planning. Uh, in our community to uh, protect, you know, our resources, activities, and everything. 
We, we can put that rule in there. I guess I think that for this plan, because we're trying to focus on data and, and identifying the places in which you may want to move forward with protecting land for the sake of protecting it or you know the values around open space itself, I would I would hesitate to make it about development because that isn't the purpose. Now that is in the in the overall sense of the town, you do want to balance those two things, right? And, there, and there's lots of issues around that. But I think for the for the map in the end that says here's where we're gonna we're gonna highlight conservation of land for reasons that are clear and defined by the plan. If you make those reasons, because I don't want development, you muddle the ability to say, we're protecting this because it's really good habitat, or we're protecting this because it connects this to that, or it makes a corridor for animals to go through, or it makes a corridor for people to go through. So I guess my my suggestion would be that 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 this plan focus on creating something that you can hang your hat on to say, this is why we're doing this. And then talk about the balancing issues. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't ever mention development in the whole plan or anything, but I think in terms of the goals, you want the goals to be related to why would you want to conserve land here versus there in town? I have a follow up question. So how would we use this plan? Let's say we come up, you know, in yeah. to uh, inform what this what the town does with a potentially approved land bond. Is it? Uh, I mean, who's going to use it and how is it going to be used? So that was an excellent segue to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> So, so this, so, and this is what we're going to spend most of our next meeting on. But this was just to kind of get your brains thinking about things. So these are the ways we might use it in terms of strategies. These are just some ideas. So you, we, you could have a conservation scorecard for acquiring open space that is identified through the priorities that we create in this plan, right? So when somebody offers land, or that can also be connected to conservation subdivisions, right? And say. We're only going to take the land if you if, you know if it is meets these goals, and here's how you find that out is by this scorecard. Um, you know you could put you know high medium priorities in terms of the uh, bonds that land that you want to purchase. You know so you could identify ahead of time lands in this area. Now again, we're not going to identify parcels. We're going to identify areas. Um, you know in this area fits. You know, you have to be in this area to be considered for this bond. Um, you could create development fees that fund open space. Those fees could vary across the town. So if you're developing in a place where there's less value, it's not as much of a fee. And if you want to develop somewhere where we've considered it high value, then there's a bigger fee there. That could be true for whether it's residential, commercial, solar, all those things, you could make it uh, ordinances that allow that to happen. Um, you could uh, make sure that the ordinances reflect that, especially in conservation subdivisions. Um, and then, you know, you could make conservation subdivisions the rule, like you can only do these. And when you do them, you got to figure out which land on them meets the criteria of this plan. Um, so, the, and that's not all of them, but that's like a, that's like a way to start thinking about it. But that's how you would use it is you would then bring it into ordinance. Like, um, like I know in Topsom, it's in their solar ordinance, right? If you build a solar farm in the areas that are their focus areas, then you have to pay the town into their open space fund. And I think there's other things, I think it's also true in subdivision development, but that's what so, they so put just to go back, then, I mean, four of these six strategies deal with development. I mean, it seems like a goal that says something about balancing growth or smart growth is part of the plan. I mean, it's, it's something that, as a community, that we need to consider. Uh, to protect open space. I don't disagree at all. <laughs> I, I guess I, to me, 
The, the difference being that the goals are what's important for which open space it is. And these strategies are the ways that you guide things on off of or onto if you're purchasing versus not developing on those areas. And so the, the goals have to do with what blobs of town you think are most important. And then the strategies are how you make that happen. And those are always going to have to do with development because that's what happens that changes things. She's trying not to say that, the oh, the open space plan just is prohibiting growth. And that she's oh. trying to say, no, we're we're actually saving the marsh. We're saving these migration areas. We're saving land for recreation. We're doing all these great things. How you do it. It's prohibiting growth a little bit. So it's like the same thing. It's just not in your face as a goal. Because you could still say, that you still have like a really generic balance the needs of the open space plan and growth something. Yeah, well, I'm um, not saying prohibit growth either, but yeah. let's be real, if you're going to protect open space, that development doesn't happen on that open space or development happens at a lower level mm -hmm. than it could if it wasn't. But we also have to balance the open space plan with the other things we have in town. We have growth areas, we have high density zoning in areas. We have a lot of conflicting things, and I think we have we want it to be useful. So I think we're all kind of like saying the same thing. It's just at the end of the day, we're the open space plan can't say thou shalt not grow anymore. That's and I'm not saying yeah. that. And I don't all. think you are either. So I think we're I mean we know we're gonna grow. We know we have areas that are slated for growth and, and higher density. And honestly, the growth is how we get some of these land. Sure. Like if we didn't have any development, we may never get the land to have the conversation to, to have it. You but know we, what I mean? So it's quite a bit. But we have to be realistic. A lot of the tools in the toolbox are related to how the town allows growth to happen. Sure. Well, and I think the strategies are really where the rubber hits the road. And those ones, obviously, as Autumn is saying, it's going to impact development. But do we want the plan's overall goals to be explicit? We're not, we're going to limit growth in Scarborough. Like, is that important? Or is it really the, um, the actions and outcomes of the plan that are important? I'm I'm struggling right now with my thoughts were a little bit smooth. I'm trying to think of some of the conversations we've had parts of conversation land or when I'm looking at stuff. Conversation my advisory board has had in the sense of how to and then thinking when we go to our council where the department has our staff, how do we make this useful to them to say, you know what, Autumn, we can't tell the planning board, we can't look at this development right now when we need to evaluate. This or you know, Andrew and I have talked about different parcels that we're just not ready to go get because we developed this. You know what I mean? It's and so we're going to lose parcels. And so how do we how do we make this a tool for council, whichever council, not the seated one, because the seated one is going to change in November and then three years later or change it again to make sure that this is something that whatever that board is can use to say we've done this work. Um, are we still meeting what it is? Because I think the growth conversation is, is a tricky one. Um, I think the funding is even more. We've seen some of the conversations regarding the land loan, what that conversation looks like. And we can't even really agree on how that and what that's being used for. There's some question there and how much that should be. But if the goal is to get to 30 by 30, that's one of the deals. Well, this is the tool that says to get to 30 by 30. No, I know. You know, this many, and then here's all the areas you're trying to get. I mean, yes. that's like perfect. Yeah, no, I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the piece that they'll say, okay, but if I, do these plans have enough, or is it, this is the plan, these are the recommendations. Our work is not done. Now. Oh, yeah, no. Our work is then to say, to, go, to keep going to, to the take these and say, if some, if a project or like you were talking about growth pops up one of these areas, all these steps need to happen before we relinquish the food. Yeah, yeah, that would be an ordinance change. Yeah, so the disconnect in this specific town is that council doesn't see development planning board. Like it's council never sees what's happening. It doesn't get to them. Uh, planning board. So we that have a good to, thing or bad? Uh, it's whatever. It's a thing. Um, 
<laughs> that's a big one. It was different. But, but, but different. council sets the, or, um, the ordinances. But council the ordinances that have to go. Yes. And so all of these strategies will then get put on our in our office to figure out what group to go work on. Because like, what does this strategy mean? Update ordinances to reflect open space values, requiring conservation subdivisions. So that's going to be a conversation with Long Range Planning Committee, the Conservation Commission, and then the Planning Department drafting ordinances that go to the Ordinance Committee and Town Council for approval. And then it's in the books. And so then, I'm sorry, this is really long. So yeah. then when a developer comes in and has a pre application with myself and the town engineer, um, and the fire department, we all sit down and we're like, oh, you're in this area. These are the rules you have to abide. Yeah. And so there's definitely a lot of work. This is okay. like the framework for that work. Yeah. And so just to, so I would, in my brain, separate the two things, right? Like we want the map and the goals to stand the test of time. Like that's what we're going to carry forward. The strategies are political. And so they're always going to happen when that confluence happens of, yes, we got the good idea. Yes, we got the people behind it. Yes, we have the council or the planning board or whoever to help us get through that, right? And that confluence happens in various times for various kinds of strategies. And so those are going to change. They'll, and the people will probably come up with new ones over time. Like, we won't have all of them. And somebody might say, hey, let's try this. And somebody says, hey, that's a great idea. But the goals and the math that's the part where we're trying to stick to like the as much science as we can with people's values added to it so that that can stand the test of time and those stay the same, but that the strategies will vary depending on what political opportunities exist. Does that help? So that makes that makes sense in, in, the, in the framework of getting the plan. It's just, I guess, selfishly, how do we make sure we continue to give the tools to planning and time to yeah. get the next piece done? Because we have a lot of plans. Yeah, yeah. So one of my fears is we have this wonderful open space plan. It has identified the areas. There's no teeth in this thing. Right. It's just, it well, just and the teeth comes, comes in the ordinance. ordinance. The teeth yeah. isn't right. in the plan. So right. the plan, like, there needs to be a commitment to implement the plan. Exactly. And that's, that's, that's right. Now, and I, and my other reaction is, I, and I, I understand how you're separating it, but at the top of it, it's when people think about the space in their mind immediately, it's like we've had too much development, it's too fast. Yeah. So we're sort of ignoring that pretty consistent feedback from the public when they think about open space and why it's important. Yeah. So, you know, um, no, I totally, I, you know, they're, they're totally reacting get that to that's a big what they yeah. was too rapid pace of development. Yeah. And that's, and so right. I, I understand though that, you know, the, having the maps and that and understand the test of time and that we, we need to, you know, and that the strategy of play is separate, but right. in people's yeah. mind, they don't separate it as much. Yeah, time. and I think we'll definitely address it in the report. Yeah. Like we will yeah. say, not say anything about it. Well, you know, but I would also say that what you want is for that test of time, that means that on a time when people aren't feeling that stress of development, that they still would agree that these are the places you should conserve, right? right? And so that's why we want to not hang our hat on because because of development we're doing this right. we're doing this because this is that these are the open spaces that we want to create for the community right it also is going to have the impact of reorganizing moving around development right. pressures like right. go back to the goals yeah i guess you know in my mind open space is a little broader than just identifying areas on a map I mean, for me, open space is really about how everything interconnects. So, you know, bike lane along roads is part of open space because it's part of connectivity and it's part of trails. Um, that's not necessarily, uh, you know, one area on a map. Uh, it is about the town's native plant list and trying to encourage. Uh, businesses and private landowners to plant native to increase habitat productivity in terms of other protected areas um, and reduce invasive species. It's about uh, what developments might look like. You know, what are the community characters that are built into developments that help maintain that field of open space? It's about uh, 
having ordinances that uh, protect farming. So neighbors can't complain about the smell of manure or, or things like that. I mean, these right to farm things. I mean, to me, that's all open space. So I, I, I guess I have a much broader view of the plan than just saying, you know, here's a map and here's uh, the areas that we're interested in because of these things. And maybe I'm in the minority, but uh, that's how I'm viewing it. I kind of can see all your points, though, Andrew. I can get to all those with these goals. Like, so protect it. Like, I'm thinking, I live in, like, ordinance land, so my, my brain is always in the weeds. I have an ordinance right now to allow um, farm stands on agricultural property with a little bit of special exception, so if somebody else is running it for the farmer, right? It's pretty easy, but it's not allowed, but it encourages that farm to stay a farm, so that would fit into foster resilience. You know, I mean, I can like even follow that back up. There's a comp plan goal for it. There's an open space master plan goal. There's like a reason for all these ordinance changes. And that's the, it's, it's hard to be in my brain sometimes, but we have all these plans. And when you get to an ordinance, you're like, okay, the open space says do this. Um, transportation master plan says this. The parks plan, you know, you pull them all in and then you're like, okay, are they all in agreement? And does this make sense? If yes, proceed. And so that this is like this extra tool to get us the um, I, I guess I I think it, we're in good shape, honestly. I I guess it's just that this plan is not gonna fix all the things. And that's the that's the hard part. Like the plans don't fix. And yeah, you don't use the plan, it's just money on a shelf. And it's pretty, um, but I know for our department, which is me, um, <laughs> for me, um, <laughs> I intend I I have a need to write ordinances. I love writing ordinances and figuring out how to put things in place. It's a thickness, I know. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Like I'm ready to get this, yeah. and then we can figure out what to do with it. Uh, so. And the is like, so what committee? What's you know town committee to use this plan to to help yeah. guide? So we will have an implementation table that takes the strategies that we come up with and gives them to people. Yeah. Like okay. you will be in charge of this, and this committee will be in charge of that. Okay. And that way, if there's a committee that's overseeing the whole thing, or a person whose job is to oversee the whole thing, they know who to check in. Okay. So we will have that at the end. And that's why you know I have no problem with these goals. I mean I think the goals can, be, but I I want the committee to at least hopefully hear me when we're thinking about the implementation of the plan, the strategies for the plan, that there are a lot of things that go into open space, not just buying a piece of land and saying, you know, this, this, this is the preserve or part. Yeah. Um, right. And, and there's a lot of plans that feed into this. I feel like you can capture that well, like strategies, like you can get plans, like they'll go on for like pages of pages of pages at first. So, uh, after everything you say, like, well, I think Andrew, your point is, it's a, it's not just an open space plan. It's like, for lack of, it's a way of life, right? And so you have to always be thinking about it whenever you're doing anything. Where's the sidewalk going? How, is that going to get you? To, so it's just an interconnected way. Of and I think you have the word interconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I, th I think it's pretty good fun. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, that's a good example. A lot of communities would not think about taking sidewalks past development, mm -hmm. but sidewalks could get people to a park or yeah. a preserve or a trail. Yeah. Uh, or a, path, a bike. You know, a path that path doesn't get sidewalk. Yeah. A dedicated path or some sort of wilderness. Yeah. Absolutely. For the sidewalk. Yeah. I guess I'd like to see the. Sample strategies. A little more focus on these goals as opposed to so oriented towards uh, ordinances and things that can be ordinances. Um, I understand the importance of everything people are saying. I understand the difficulty of building ordinances that are realistic in, you know, in the real world because of all the competing demands. But our strategies need to 
be things that clearly promote a healthy environment ecosystem, whatever the heck that is. Yeah. I mean, you know, a bunch of biologists were in the public meeting in here and yeah. they, you know, and they they fed us that stuff. That was great. No, healthy biodiversity ecosystem. What's it the town to do with that? What can the town do? Yeah. Right? No. yeah. I mean, I understand how we use it. And yeah. All, but I've been involved in conservation for a long time. So what we can we can definitely set the strategies up so that they go underneath the goal, yeah. right? So that so they're connected to those. You know, yeah. What what fosters the settlements? Yeah. What, is it? what fosters it in the community or the local yeah. land? Is it farm scans? Is it yeah. different ordinances? Is it and what is interconnected and accessible mean? Right. One of the most valuable things you could do when it's come up in several things people said is what do we mean by interconnectedness? And what are the examples? And maybe we should focus in on some of those things in yeah. town. You know, whether it's sidewalks or trails or, or you know, fewer stoplights, whatever. <laughs> I'm <thinking joking. laughs> I'd like more stoplights. That's so much fun. Um, <laughs> but anyway, have yeah. our goals. Yeah. Have, you know, our, our, these might be our, our, our overarching sort of philosophy. Our goals would be things that achieve these. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we can definitely tie all the strategies to the different goals. I mean, some of them will probably apply to more than one. Um, you know, but we can we can definitely organize things that way, and we can definitely make sure that you know there'll there'll be strategies in there that may you know they're not ordinance oriented. So I think one of the things we have always have to be careful about in a plan like this is that, is that you know, people don't always, I mean, you all do, you do these things, but the general public doesn't always have a great idea of what the town can and cannot do. And so we don't want to put goals in there like, you know, I don't know, town should, should support biodiversity, right? Like, how would the town do that? <laughs> you know, that's not really what the town does. So... You know, if we're going to say that that's what we want to do, then to have, what is it about the town's abilities that would go under that? And to make sure that the strategies that we put in, even though there's lots of bigger ideas and bigger things, we want to make sure that the strategies are very concrete and things that a town can actually achieve. They don't have to be things that town government can only achieve. They could be things like there should be more connection, you know, between you know, some committee and another committee, or, you know, people should spend more time outside. <laughs> like, it can be that broad. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if that's useful, but but you, but there could be things that are more publicly oriented than, than town oriented, talking about the way the town interacts with each other. Most of them, you're going to want to be things that the town has control over and can do. Well, well, I guess I, I want to disagree a little bit. I don't mean to be the one arguing here or everything, but towns can do a lot for biodiversity. Uh, they can say that development, when you have a uh, commercial or, or subdivision, 90% of all the plantings have to be native plants. Uh, they can leave road corridors unmowed and, you know, for a certain period no, I totally of time, agree. allow pollinators to yeah. eat. You know, they can have a no pesticide thing on uh, town lands, yeah. uh, which we do. Yeah. So we want the goals to be, or the strategies to be like that, specific things that are achievable and, and implementable instead of the town should be bio biodiversity. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Like we want the strategies to be that specific. Right. Yeah, so goals more general or, yeah. and then yeah. strategies more specific. Yeah. Okay. But to Judy's point, you could also throw in some strategies that are not just town related. Yeah. They could, you know, um, citizen groups could participate in um, cleanups or right. something. Or I don't know. Yeah, I'm just making stuff up. But yeah. there's some cool I mean, good things that you can throw in there that are strategies. Know. That maybe a committee is like, oh, we can do that. That's right. Um, you know, at Summerfest, you should have blah, blah, blah. You know, every year. Consider an educational outreach program. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. could be anybody. Right. There's a oh, mixture. Right. Yeah. So it'll be a mixture of things related to ordinance and urban related to committee or things. You said our next meeting we would really get down and yes. nitty gritty for strategies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This was really just to start people thinking about it so that when we come back next time and we have more detail and we'll try to, well, we will get that out to you beforehand so you can read through it so that when we get here, we can talk about it. Um, so that, yeah, so that we get some of that nailed down.
very interesting. One of the very interesting things about this, it is very thought provoking. So it's done a good job of getting us thinking about this. <laughs> what occurs to me though is that you've really got one goal of your open space network. And then it has under. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, so let's think about that and decide, you know, is our goal here, our primary goal, a network of open space right. or a whole bunch of open space wherever we can buy land, which is where we are now. You know, I'm, and I say where we are now, except that as a town, we committed to <clears throat> helping to purchase land with a very, very serious strategy with conservation objectives in it, like the first strategy. I and mean, that exists in the town right now. Yeah. Conservation scorecard exists. We use it all the time. Um, and uh, and as a result, we are sort of you know developing interconnectedness um, because the land trust is focused on that and yeah. our own conservation um, uh, acquisition strategy focuses on that. It's it, it just one, but yeah. it's one criteria. So an open space network, you know, I mean, have, what else? You know, I mean, yes, we should promote, but the open space network is number one. What, what else? What are the other? I mean, what we're missing in the whole thing so far is something that was our focus of the first open space plan, which was community character. And I understand that's a that's a catch rate. You know, you got to stay away from it to some degree because you know how can we say that character to the start of the community? But people actually do have a feeling for yep. the places they drive to and the places they live. How much do people want that to change? How much do they want it to be more like some other place that's much busier and much different? You know, and maybe you're talking about development, but that's beside the point. What is no, there's a scenic what problem, looking, right? Like that would be looking at scenic. No. Well, just yeah, right. um, I, I think what people also care about, even if they're living at higher density or, you know, or, or we want to encourage development, higher density development, is they want to have some ability to access that open space, even if they're not living in it. And I think that's something that Scarborough has that it's, we want to preserve that character and make people's ability to not only enjoy beautiful view sheds, but actually, you know, enter that open space yeah. and, and recreate and, and enjoy it. So, can we add something too about the health of the residents? In Scarborough, like being part of us, like this is that um, we don't have anything really about like mental well being and physical well being and just the health of the community in general, having access to all of these things. Maybe that's where your community character turns into like the healthier community, whether it's right. an engaged community. And I mean, yep, I am from Texas. In Texas, it's just a bourbon straw at its finest, right? And living here is amazing. And I love Maine for all of the things that you all want. So sure. <laughs> so it's like from an outsider, like you all, sometimes I think people take for granted the, the trees and the green space and the fresh air and the clean and all of those things that come along with that. We don't have any of that so much. So I mean, that's. I think we can yeah, Laura, this shifts around that too. And again, my main conversation at the end of this is how, how do we make this strategic enough, but also broad enough where we're looking for some sort of funding source or how? Yeah, I mean, we could do, you know, tree coverage percentage in our public spaces. We could be Tree City USA. <laughs> we could do a lot of different things that come out of this that are not necessarily like open space, but to Andrew's point, it is open space. It's yes. all kind of just. How people can live in the community outside of their own personal property. I like that adding that goal up there. Yeah. When we talk about it, we talk about the quality of life. Right. Yeah, that's it's, yeah. not to get off subject, but this has been asked me numerous times of late. Um, so I think we want to think about this. Have we finalized, based on our definition, the amount of open space and consider conservation? In the town owned properties presently? Not yet. <laughs> we're working towards that. We will have it by the time we're done. Okay. Yeah, we still have to uh, we still have to finalize our definition of focus. Yeah, I see it, right? Right. What's that? Oh, 
Do we have a time like a ballpark and big beer? Again, we're working on stuff to land on on the backside. Yeah. Somebody asked me, he's been asked numerous times, and he's like, how far are we away? And I'm like, right, well, we'll start it all. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, these guys got an email from me last week saying we need to we need yeah. to work on this. So um yeah, I'm I'm hoping it will that be. that it'll be a, a discussion topic at our next meeting also. Okay. It's kind of looking at revised numbers and reaching some agreement yeah. on um Where, which ball they fit in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's huge for us if we start looking at better. Well, and I have sending the number of funding, so those are all yeah, I, I remember having a conversation with our, our team from Ushed after kind of this group's kickoff meeting and like 30 by 30 is so much of what we're kind of focused on right now. But just even if we get that number by 20 by or by 2030, concert, hopefully conservation doesn't stop that. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm more looking for justification in the sense of even have a lot of discussion about how much land costs and next kind Percentage wise, how much acres grown since the last time, cost wise, yeah. you know, yeah. being able to lean back on this sort of stuff. Like, if you want to protect, you know, how can it be able to just really reach that and beyond? Yeah. You know. All right. So just going through the schedule, just a reminder to everybody. So right now we're talking, we're doing conservation priorities. So that was looking at the maps and thinking about how people like prioritize stuff. Next meeting in September, we're going to talk about the strategy and more specifics. Um, we're going to actually keep the survey open. I think we're going to just slide all those things down. So we're going to keep the survey open probably till the at least to that October, what was that meeting? October 4th, October 6th, when Sustainability Day is, um, and maybe the week after that, or two weeks after that, we'll decide to close it. Um, and then uh, we'll have the draft plan for people to review. Um, and then we will also have, it, uh, by that point, that early November, we'll have another digital survey for people to fill in with more of the, the goals. Like, I don't think we'll, and this will be up to the committee. We can put the whole draft plan up for people to read, but I don't know that you will have gone through it enough to really want to do that. Um, but what we can do is put like the goals up. I don't think we'd put all the strategies up because that would just be too long of a survey, but we could put the goals up and ask people what they think about the goals and are we missing anything? Like, did we get it right? And we'll have the map finalized and we put the map up and say, does this does this make sense? Does it, does it look right to you? Um, and, and so that will be that second survey. Um, and then we'll be in November, in early November. Uh, you'll have had the plan. Um, if we're keeping the survey open through October, it may be more drafty <laughs> by the time we get it to you than it would have been if we closed the survey earlier. But, um, but we'll get that to you. And so that we can get that plan to you to review and get us that feedback so that we can have it done, the goal will have it done by December, early January, so it can go to the council in January. So that's the overall goal. Um, and we will get you parts and pieces as they, you know, as they're available, so you'll have plenty of time to review them as we put it together. My only thought is on the um, a secondary survey reviewing the goals, I agree, and looking at the strategies. Um, but just something Rob said when we talked about trying to find what the, what was in that, like your, the way your mind was working, I think I would just recommend when we go to that second survey and put out those goals, have some sort of little narrative next to it. Yep. This goal, you know, things that fall into this category. Yeah. Like resiliency or, you know, just so people understand what they're yep. looking at in terms of broader scope without having to write anything. Well, and kind of connecting the first survey to the goals yes. that are established. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Oh, just any questions anybody else has or any comments about where we're heading? I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a good product that we can use. I think it's always a little clunky when you're getting something, but I think it's going to be a good yeah. 
September meeting. Uh, that is our next step. Perfect. <laughs> you guys are so good at providing safety. Yeah, you guys are. <laughs> like, what's the next time? <laughs> Let me give you a bunch of questions to ask. <laughs> I wish I had that much forethought. <laughs> so we came up with a few ideas for continuing outreach on the survey. You know, people keep contacting their connections and we'll keep moving that forward. Um, and then we need to send the for the next can we send the survey link out to us again? Yep. Now we need to read last the groups that we support. It's on our What's Happening page. Yeah, What's Happening is a big box at the top. I mean, for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> but I will also send it out directly again. Please keep. <laughs> <laughs> it's got paste it into an email and it'll click on it. I know I don't have any of the postcards with the QR code with me. Um, uh, so let's see how much time. Um, I'll put this back at um, you and Madeline about how much time you need to kind of prepare for the next the next meeting. Um, so uh, when we initially started, um, when I did the initial outreach to the members of this group, Tuesday mornings worked well for people. Are we still good with Tuesday mornings? Does anybody, <laughs> would anyone prefer? I am probably going to have problems with Tuesday mornings in September because I have both my eyes operated on on a Tuesday morning. So oh, like no. half the Tuesday mornings are. Oh, all right. <laughs> I don't want to be very functional. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. All right. So, like, how does Thursday work for folks? <laughs> what week are you making the first well, week or second week in September? Not even because it's already August 20th. So, I'm sorry. I was thinking the fourth week of September. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll be in the, at our national interest. Or we could twenty six works for me. Thursdays are not good for Robin. Oh. Okay. How about um, Monday the twenty third? How do people feel about Monday? Do you think? Monday's the thirtieth. Uh, 23rd. 23rd is 3rd. 3rd. 3rd, I have a meeting, but I think. 3rd. <clears throat> Monday the 23rd, folks on Zoom. Speak now. Type now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, we're going to talk about strategies on the 23rd. Would it be possible to get yeah, we'll them get ahead, yes. like on the 17th? For sure. Because we had a lot of conversations. We just had like four little sentences. Yeah. So I feel like yeah. strategies, we probably need some time. Totally. To yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, well, 9 a.m. on the 23rd, same time. <laughs> yes. All right. 9 a.m. on the 23rd. I will send out a calendar link after the meeting. 9 a.m. to 11. Yeah. <laughs> and hybrid again is that i feel like for stuff like this it's better to be in person and i feel like we should do it in person but i think there's a lot more dialogue. yeah yeah so you don't want to do anything i mean we can set it up but We'll give you, we'll bring candy or we'll something. Bring, we'll, we'll bring breakfast. We'll <laughs> provide breakfast if you're here. If you're here in person. <laughs> caviar and eggs. So Andrew's screening for caviar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Monday morning breakfast. I need to definitely put that one in my calendar. That's, that's community services. Uh, so you just got to go flush off and see that cash. Um, <laughs> Robin, your question about the public safety building, I will let you know. We'll either be in chambers or the public safety building, whatever one, depending on which one is available. Um, so when I send out the meeting invite, uh, it'll specify where it will be. Oh. 
much. Will it be here again, do you think? Here or town hall? I will, the invite will, will specify and I'll let you all know when I send it out also. Um, personally, I would prefer to be in chambers. It's a little less work for us. <laughs> Rearranging and we tables initially and then giving them back. <laughs> Uh, I will know that Chambers B will not be available, so it'll have to be an A because there'll be early voting in Chambers B mm -hmm. at that point. Any other questions? Or, or, or they'll at least be getting set up for it by that point. Yeah. I know time is flying by really fast. All right. If there's there's nothing else, then um, we will plan to see everyone on September 23rd. I will resend the um, the survey link to everyone and um, committee members. If you could get it out to your respective committees friends and neighbors, um, all of that stuff, uh, so that we can bump up our participation in the survey. That would be really helpful. I'll put that in the email also. <laughs> all right. Can slide that. Yes. Great. All right, all have a great rest of your day. Thanks everybody. See you next Thank month. You.